Sir, red alert. Another one, Commander? Yes, sir. Darth Kim of Kim and Mikey just announced that Tony Morris III is no longer a governing body member of Jehovah's Witnesses. I'll make best speed to JW.org and gather the article. We would be honored if you would join us. Hello and welcome back to the Darth Magog channel. I'm your host, the Dark Lord of the Apostates, Darth Magog. Tony Morris, hater of tight pants, smoke show enthusiast, McAllen's red label drinker, and member of the Jehovah's Witness governing body. Well, not that last one anymore. As of today, February 22nd of 2023, it was announced at Jehovah's Witnesses World Headquarters in Warwick, New York, that brother Anthony Tony Morris III is officially no longer serving on the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. The announcement was made very quietly on the JW.org website, and I do mean quietly. Unlike a story a few weeks ago that announced the ascension of Brother Gage Flegel and Brother Jeffrey Winder, the announcement of downsizings was not placed on the front page. Instead, one had to go to the newsroom specifically to find the announcement. After 18 years of service, Tony Morris seems to have retired from being a member of the Jehovah's Witnesses governing body. But the question on everyone's mind is, what the hell happened? Well, that's probably after the party they're throwing to celebrate. Anyway, at this point in the day, no one is certain as to why this happened. The last time a governing body member stepped down was with Guy Pearce in 2014. And when I say stepped down, I mean he passed away on March 18th of 2014. And, as of this recording, the Frequently Asked Questions article has not yet been edited to remove Brother Morris from the governing body's ranks. So, that opens us up to some speculation. Hence, I shall present three possible reasons that Tony Morris has left the governing body. Reason 1. He may have been removed. It's no secret that Tony Morris is famous within the witnesses and infamous to their critics. He is known for his intense inflammatory talks that he gives to the witnesses regarding the Jehovah's Witness belief of Armageddon, or God's holy war on non-believers. In such talks, he's described enemies of Jehovah, quote, like a hot dog on a grill, blackened and splitting open, and has even performed an illustration of some 8 billion odd people being unalived in mass. They will vanish like smoke. So, this, I thought this would be a nice memory aid, to this verse stay in the mind. Here's what Jehovah's promising. Okay. as Jehovah's enemies. He also seems to have a bone to pick with the LGBTQ community members in the fashion industry, as he famously went on a tirade about tight pants. But like I've been telling uh, others, and, and this is a fact, the homosexuals that are designing these clothes, they like you in tight pants. Because apparently the tightness of your pants determines your sexuality. Who knew? And of course, who could forget the world-famous Bottlegate scandal? This is where Tony Morris was caught on a Sunday morning going to a liquor store to purchase high-end whiskey. Now, keep in mind, purchasing alcohol isn't wrong or illegal as long as you're of age and intend to consume it responsibly. Nor is it against Jehovah's Witnesses' teachings, so old tight pants Tony is off the hook there. The issue is that he was out on a Sunday when a Jehovah's Witness public talk and field service would normally have been had, so it's possible he may have skipped a meeting to go to the LQ. This is offensive to many of us XJWs who are often berated and belittled for missing a meeting for any reason, demonstrating different rules for the leadership versus the average member of the religion. To compound this issue, Tony was purchasing what appeared to be Red Label McAllen's whiskey, which I understand tends to be over $150 per bottle. Ultimately, he seemed to have gathered about $850 worth of it, which is bizarre given that all Bethelites take a vow of poverty to serve at Bethel. And Morris was certainly a Bethel servant, meaning that $850 of whiskey is something like the monthly stipend of four to six Bethelites. Given all the videos and press around Tony's escapades, there's a distinct possibility he was just deleted as a governing body member to save face. On the other hand, Stephen Led and Kenneth Cook have gone on similar anti-LGBTQ tirades before, and all of Tony's hate speech is often supported by Watchtower Doctrine. So if he was removed, it may not be for that reason. Reason 2 could possibly be Tony's health. 
Now, he's not specifically in horrible health. Tony is in his early 70s, about 72 or 73 this year. So while he does qualify for a senior citizen discount at his local liquor store, he's not the oldest CEO out there. Warren Buffett is still running his company at the ripe young age of 91 years old today. So it's not the most unreasonable thing for Tony to still serve as a governing body member at his age. But where it may get challenging is his health. There's been speculation since Bottlegate that Tony may have a drinking problem, as is relatively common amongst Jehovah's Witnesses. And some XJW commentators have observed Tony slurring his speech in some talks after the Bottlegate incident, potentially pointing to his alcoholism or perhaps another medical condition causing it. Given that many other governing body members tend to serve until their time comes, it's possible that Tony's health may be forcing him to give up the career that he loved. Reason 3 is, Tony may have just quit. While it's unusual for governing body members to quit, it's not out of the question. Iwar Chidi resigned in 1979 as outlined in the 1980 Yearbook of Jehovah's Witnesses on pages 257 going into 258. Leo Greenless also resigned in 1984. And who can forget the famous removal of Raymond Victor Franz, who soon after disassociated. So that was more of a hybrid. While watching Tony Morris on screen, I have a tough time believing that Tony hasn't been drinking the Kool-Aid so I doubt he's leaving over any doctrinal disagreements. Instead, he may just be very tired. He's a Vietnam War veteran, so it's likely that he has a military pension, so he's probably been able to invest and he may just want to live out the final part of the final part of the last days in a more low-key manner. But that's all speculation, XJW agents. Why do you think that Tony stepped down? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section down below. Until next time, XJW agents, the elders may be watching you, but Darth Magog is watching the Watchtower.